Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the previous episode, episode 35, I talked about creating pipeline state objects and we saw that we can use a PSO to load shader programs for different programmable pipeline stages. The shader programs in D3D12 are written in HLSL, which stands for High Level Shader Language and compiled into intermediate binary bytecode that can be processed further by the driver when we create a pipeline state object. The driver will then turn this bytecode into a format that can be uploaded to the specific GPU in the system. This episode in the Game Engine series is about compiling shaders and reading them in the engine so that later we can get their bytecode and use it during PSO creation. Today's video is about setting up the submodule for managing compiled shaders in the low-level renderer and the next videos will deal with the actual compilation of shaders using DirectX Shader Compiler. The shaders in Primal Engine are divided in two groups. Shaders that are used to render individual objects, which I also refer to as material shaders, are mostly authored by the user or game programmer. This is done either by writing the code directly or doing some kind of visual scripting with nodes, similar to the material editor in Unreal Engine or shader graphs in Unity. This episode is not about this group of shaders, although I'm going to use the same method for compiling them. The second group of shaders is used internally by the low-level renderer. These are the engine shaders. For example, there are shaders for light culling calculations and post-processing effects. Today's video is about handling this group of shaders in the engine. As I mentioned in the intro of this video, I'm going to add a submodule to the renderer which manages access to compiled shaders. So let's add a new header file that I'll call d3d12 shaders and also introduce a new namespace for our shaders. In here, I'm going to add an enumeration for shader stages and list all shader types of D3D12's rasterizer pipeline. Pretty much all submodules will need initialization and cleanup operations, so I'll add two functions for initialization and shutdown. Each low-level renderer will need dedicated shaders, which I call engine shaders. An example of such a shader is a simple vertex shader for drawing a full-screen triangle. I'll tell you more about this shader in a later episode, but for now, let's just add an HLSL file to the shaders folder and call it full-screen triangle. Also make sure that these shader files are not included in the project, because otherwise Visual Studio would try to compile them when we built the project. However, I'd like to be in charge of compiling the shaders myself. Now let's write the simplest vertex shader. I'll not write a real shader for outputting a full screen triangle here because I'd like to focus on loading and using compiled shaders first. Now that we have an example of an engine shader, I can add another enumeration that contains an item for each shader. The number of engine shaders will grow, but ultimately it won't get that large. Next, I add a function that will return a pointer to the bytecode of a specific engine shader. We need a CPP file to implement these functions, so let's add one. 
The initialize function simply calls load engine shaders, which unsurprisingly does exactly what its name says that it does. It will load all compiled shaders in one block of memory and then point to each shader using an array of pointers, as we will see shortly. One important thing here is that the low-level renderer doesn't know or care where this blob of memory comes from. Therefore, it asks the content module to provide the binary data that contains the shaders. I'm going to add this function later. For now, let's pretend it exists and will give us back a pointer to the data and the size of it. The way compiled shaders sit in that block is pretty simple. It starts with a 64-bit unsigned integer that contains the size of each shader's bytecode, followed by the bytecode. This is repeated for each shader in the blob of memory. Let's add a function declaration for load engine shaders so that we can get rid of this error. To easily access each shader, we define a struct with the same format and use it as pointer to each shader within that memory block. So this struct has a U64 size followed by an array of bytes. Then we can type def a pointer type from this struct and use it to point to each shader. Also note the const keyword since we are not allowed to write to this memory. Finally, we can define an array of compiled shader pointers that has the same number of elements as there are engine shaders. In load engine shaders function, I get a reference to each compiled shader pointer and cast the memory at the current offset within the shaders blob. This also gives us access to the size of the shader, which we can use to jump to the next one and repeat this process until we reach the end of the buffer. When shutting down, we need to clear these pointers and release the memory held by the unique pointer. <laughs> 
Last but not least, we need to write the function that gets us the request.engine shader. Here we just return the data pointed to by the compiled shader pointer. Please note that I'm taking the address of the bytecode. For now, this was all we needed to do in order to use the compiled shaders. The last step is to write the function in content namespace, which reads the file that contains the engine shaders. In this function, we ask the high-level renderer for the location of engine shaders for the current graphics API. That means that we need to add a new function in the graphics namespace that will return this path relative to the current working directory. Here I add get engine shaders path function. I also add an array of strings that contains the relative engine shaders path for each one of the supported graphics APIs. I admit this part of the code is a bit sketchy, but we need some scaffolding in order to move forward. I'm pretty sure the way we acquire engine shaders will change in the future. For now, we just have this array and depending on the current graphics API, we can return the relative path for engine shaders. I call this file shaders.bin. I'm going to add a new member to platform interface to hold the graphics platform enumeration. That way I can use this GFX variable to figure out which graphics API was initialized. We finished constructing a new submodule for handling compiled shaders for the D3D12 renderer. We still need to plug it in by simply calling the initialization function when the renderer is initialized, but I'll do that when we actually have a file that contains the compiled engine shaders. Compiling both engine shaders and material shaders will happen outside of the engine itself. For a shipping game, there will be no assets or shader processing. The engine will expect everything to be in a format that can be readily used. That's why we have the content tools DLL that is used by the level editor, and we will have something similar for shader compilation. However, instead of creating a module for compiling shaders that's used by the level editor, I'd like to first try and set it up in our test renderer program so we can figure out what is needed to compile shaders and how to do it. I'll start by wishing that I had a function that I could call to compile shaders. Let's continue our habit of choosing function names that are way out there and call it compile shaders. Because I'm at a point that I'm going to write shaders soon, and since I could make mistakes and typos in shaders code that would cause the compilation to fail, I would like to get a chance to fix my errors without having to close and restart the application. Therefore, when compilation fails, I'm going to loop and give the user the choice to retry. So if compilation would fail, we would see a message box popping up with retry and cancel buttons. As you might have expected, compiling shaders is a bit involved and can get arbitrarily complicated depending on the use case and the sanity of the game engine programmer. So I think it's a good idea to have it separated in its own header and CPP files. Let's add a header file for shader compilation first and include it in the test renderer CPP. 
Next, I create a shader compilation CPP file for the implementation of our little function here. The first thing I do here is to exactly tell the computer what I'd like to happen, and that's to return true if the compiled shaders are up to date. That means that there is already a binary file that is not older than any of our shader source code files. If that's not the case though, we need to compile the shaders and at the end of this function we need to save them to the binary file that's going to be loaded by the engine. Now let's include the headers that we need here. Since I'm going to use DirectX Shader Compiler, or DXE in short, we need to include dxeapi.h. We also need to access the shaders header for retrieving shader stage types and engine shader enumerations. Remember, we are not doing any cross compilation for other graphics APIs yet. All I want to do for now is to set up HLSL compilation. Instead of typing relative paths here, I'm going to add an additional include directory using the project settings. After compilation, the bytecode for shaders will be returned in an IDXC blob interface. Each shader's bytecode will be in a different blob, which we'll put in a vector and pass it to the function that writes them to a file. For now, I just add a placeholder for these functions, which we are going to implement later. In the meanwhile, we loop through engine shaders and compile them one by one. To compile a shader, we need to know which file it is in, which function is the shader function, which engine shader it is, and finally, what shader stage it belongs to. We put all this information in a shader file info structure and kinda hard code an array of it into this CPP file. For example, we already have our first engine shader, which is the full screen triangle vertex shader. We also check that the array size is matched by using a static assert. Also, for now, I'm going to hard code a relative path to the engine shader's HLSL source files. Here I need the file system header again. I'm not including this header in the common headers because it will indirectly include standard vector and standard deck. And remember, we have our own implementation of those and we don't want to accidentally use STL implementation instead. Now we can continue constructing the path to each shader file and check if it exists. Constructing the absolute path here is not really necessary and I'll probably remove it later. 
Next, we do the actual shader compilation, which hopefully will return a valid blob of bytecode. In that case, we can add it to the array of shaders. It seems that the full interface for IDXC blob is defined in the D3D12 shader header file that comes with Windows SDK. So I have to include it first. What's left to do is to write these two functions and finally implement the shader compilation functionality. Let's start with checking whether the compiled shaders file is up to date. First, we need to locate the file by asking the renderer where to find it. Previously, we wrote a function that would get us the location of compiled shaders file for the currently used graphics API. However, we compile the shaders before the renderer is initialized. Therefore, we can't use this function and we need to write a new one which will return the file location for a given API. After adding that function, we can continue and check whether the compiled shaders file exists and if it is newer than the HLSL shader source files. If both conditions are met, then we don't need to recompile anything. Next is the save compiled shaders function. Again, we get the path where the binary file is going to be saved. First, the folders are created if they don't exist yet. Then we attempt to create a binary file and upon success, we simply write the size of each compiled shader followed by their bytecode to that file. Note that the path includes the file name and therefore we need to use the parent path for creating the folders. <laughs> 
This is everything that we need for now to manage shader source files and the compiled shaders. The next video will be dedicated to using DirectX Shader Compiler to compile the engine shaders. If you have any questions about shader compilation or anything related to Primal Game Engine so far, then feel free to leave a comment or ask your question on our Discord server. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.